We ready? Tell me when you're live. I'm barely alive, but tell me when we're live. We okay, welcome everybody tonight to our March 3rd town board meeting. Before we get started, just everybody stand up. We'll have a quick Pledge of Allegiance and we'll get going. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. The United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation to God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Okay, so with us tonight, we have the town board members, Andrew Regenbaum, Steve Monroe, Stephen Bedetti, Sylvia Santiago, our town clerk, Kelly Allegra. We have our town attorney with us, Dave Zagon. We have John McDonald from our IT department supplying us with IT service and my secretary, Petrina Rapp, is here for any emails that come in from people. And we have also with us tonight, Fred Donut from uh, Donut Group, who's going to make a presentation and, and that will be the first item on the agenda regarding the 2021 hazardous mitigation plan. So Fred, you're up. Just figure out how to unmute myself here. Can everyone hear me? We got you. All right, great. Uh, nice to see you all this evening, uh, supervisor, members of the town board. Uh, my name is Fred Donight, for the record, uh, Donight Group, and we've been assisting the town and the town's hazard mitigation planning team in the development of the 2021 update to the town's hazard mitigation plan. So um, I would just like to go over some of the details regarding the update and the process and answer questions that you might have or any questions that arise from the public. Um, if I can, I'd like to share my screen here. Uh, let me see if I can do that. Yes, it is there. Okay, great. So I prepared a few slides for you this evening. Um, I wanna be respectful of your time. I know uh, you have what looks like a quite lengthy agenda this evening. So uh, I will keep my remarks uh, as brief as possible. Um, I have about eight or nine slides here. I'd just like to go through and then uh, we can get some questions answered for you if uh, if that's helpful. So, as I mentioned, uh, we have been working on the update to the town's hazard mitigation plan uh, with uh, a group of individuals that was appointed by this board, uh, the hazard mitigation planning team, and that team consists of uh, Councilman B Bedetti, uh, Mark Edsel was on the team uh, as an advisor, uh, Anthony Fayo, Mike Big, Sean McGrath, J.D. Merritt, Fred Fayo, and Barney Bedetti as well. Um, so just to provide a very quick background on where we are today, this is the second a five year update to the original plan, which was adopted in 2011. Uh, there was a 2016 update, and then, of course, this is the 2021 update. Uh, so, FEMA requires that this plan be updated on a five year basis to remain eligible for FEMA grant funding, and there's a number of different grant programs that. FEMA offers that uh, I will quickly go over in just a few moments. Uh, but we we kicked off this process uh, March of last year, so it's been just about a year now uh, since we've been at this. Uh, we've met multiple times with the Hazard Mitigation Planning Committee in the development and revision of the plan. Uh, I'd also like to note that FEMA places a very strong emphasis on soliciting public input on the plan and the proposals included in the plan. We have taken the opportunity to reach out to all of your adjoining communities, uh, 
the DOT and other applicable agencies with respect to the plan. We've included information on your website. There's a page that's dedicated specifically to the hazard mitigation plan with the last adopted plan and some of the updates that we've been working on. So let's see here, January 2021 filing uh, the draft plan for review and public comment. We submitted the plan in January, I guess uh, just about a month and a half ago uh, for public review and uh, opening the process up to uh, comment from, from the general public. And then of course tonight, the public hearing on the plan. So, very quickly, the purpose and need of the hazard mitigation plan. The plan is given authority by the Disaster Mitigation Act of, of 2000. The goals of the Disaster Mitigation Act are to promote disaster preparedness and to promote hazard mitigation. And then we have the mitigation grant programs that I just mentioned. We have a pre-disaster mitigation grant program, the flood mitigation assistance program, the hazard mitigation grant program, and then lastly, building resistant infrastructure and communities or BRIC, which is going to replace the pre-disaster mitigation plan going forward. The, the hazard mitigation grant program essentially provides funds mm -hmm. following a presidential uh, disaster declaration and any community would be open to that funding regardless of whether a plan was in place for that community. Mm -hmm. The pre-disaster mm -hmm. mitigation and flood mitigation assistance are both competitive programs where FEMA mm -hmm. releases money on a yearly basis for a variety of projects, projects that are identified in the hazard mitigation plan to address uh, resiliency and protecting the community against hazards that may occur. Moving on. A natural hazard is an extreme natural event that poses a risk to people and infrastructure. And what is hazard mitigation? It's actions we take now that reduce or eliminate long-term risk to people, property and resources from natural hazards and their effects. And the long-term goals of hazard mitigation planning are to reduce the loss of life damage to property and infrastructure, costs to residents and businesses, municipal service costs, educate residents and policymakers, and connect and enhance the hazard mitigation planning to other community planning efforts and to preserve natural resource systems in the community. So example projects that would be eligible for the grant funding that we mentioned, building acquisitions and elevations, elevating the buildings above the floodplain or the base flood elevation, culvert repair and replacement, drainage projects, bank stabilization, wind seismic and snow load retrofits and standby power and uh, primarily for critical facilities. So the, the, those are just a couple example projects. So hazards that are, that are included in the town's plan, we've included uh, profiles on earthquakes, which is required by FEMA, extreme temperatures and drought, flooding, Windstorms, which includes hurricanes, tornadoes, and tropical storms, severe winter storms, and then water supply contamination. The issue with water supply contamination being that mitigation funds are not awarded for actions that address only uh, man-made uh, man-made type 
hazards or uh, terrorism, sabotage, man-made events. Um, so the plan profiles these identified hazards to understand areas, populations, and critical facilities most impacted or vulnerable to hazard events in the community. And FEMA breaks down the hazard mitigation strategies and actions into four separate areas or categories, local plans and regulations, structure and infrastructure projects, natural resource protection, and public education and awareness. So identifying, evaluating, and prioritizing mitigation projects, the hazard mitigation planning team identified and developed a series of 29 separate mitigation projects. And those range from drainage improvements and flood control projects to backup power and standby generators to critical facilities, sewer pump station upgrades, staff training and public educational initiatives, and a number of other items as well. So the mitigation projects were then prioritized based on a cost benefit analysis, analyzing project costs, funding opportunities, technical feasibility, effectiveness of eliminating or reducing damage to structures and infrastructure, effectiveness of protecting lives and preventing injuries, compatibility with the goals of the plan update, and compatibility with other local and regional plans and programs. The team then uh, developed an implementation time frame for rolling out updates. <clears throat> So, next steps in the process is to finalize this plan based on public comment from the town board and members of the public at large. <clears throat> and then what we would do is take the plan and forward it to New York State DHSES and FEMA for approval pending adoption. The town board would then adopt the plan and continue to implement the plan. So the town has been, of course, working on implementing a number of these mitigation measures that have been identified since the original adoption. And then once it's adopted, the town would begin the update cycle, the five-year update cycle with the hazard mitigation planning team meeting on a yearly basis to review the recommendations and update items within the plan. And as I had mentioned previously, the five-year update is required to remain eligible for this FEMA funding. So with that, I would close my remarks and ask if there's any questions from the town board or any members of the public. Okay, Fred, you're going to take that down and then we'll be able to see you again. Let's see how I do this. Okay. Okay. There you go. You got it. There we go. Okay. Be uh, listen, Fred, I want to apologize for butchering your name. Oh, night. I can That's butcher fine. your name pretty easily. No worries. No worries. All right. Uh, so before we open up to the public, I just ask any of the board members, any comments? So I thought Fred made a very nice presentation. Any comments on what? He had to say about this plan. Seems pretty simple to me. We got a couple of people on on elected officials on that uh, committee, Stephen Vedetti and Anthony Feo, and I appreciate their help putting this together. But it, this has to be done because the only way we're going to be able to tap into FEMA on some of these things. So let me just open it up to the public now. If anybody in the public has any comments they can call in or send an email and we'll try and answer them so we'll just hold off for a minute to see if there's any comments on this before I close it up supervisor if, if, if I may um, yes. I noticed on the agenda that 
you had included closing the public hearing and adoption of the plan this evening. Yep. I would note that the way the way FEMA typically handles this is we would send the plan up to FEMA and DHSES prior to the commission. I'm sorry, the uh, the board closing the public hearing on on the plan and adopting the plan. FEMA FEMA issues an approval pending adoption by the okay. town board, and the reason we do that is because there may there may potentially be uh, changes that FEMA or DHSES wants to wants made to the plan that would give us the opportunity to incorporate those changes into the plan prior to the board adopting the document. Okay, so then we won't close the public hearing tonight. It would be my recommendation that you leave it open at this time. Okay. And well. then uh, depending on the workload of FEMA, we would, um, you know, potentially have the opportunity or you as a board would ha potentially have the opportunity to to adopt the plan at your April meeting, uh, possibly May meeting. Okay, uh, thanks for that up update there. So we make sure we get this right. Um, anybody from the public, John McDowell, type it in? No one. Trina? Okay, so we'll just end it there and we'll move on to the next motion, which has to do with Holiness. Chair Lantana, motion town board, town of the Windsor, hereby adopt the town of the Windsor 21 adoption plan update. As this jurisdiction has its mitigation plan, direct its consultant, no night group to forward the plan to FEMA for approval in accordance with the resolution in the next year too. Motion. So, George, uh, yes. if I could, based on Fred's advice, um, in addition to holding the public hearing open, we'll hold off on this motion to adopt. Well, you're, well, see if we hear back from FEMA. So well, this motion is to forward it to them. You don't want to do that either. No, we don't need to do that. We'll just okay. forward it on to them. Right. That's good with me. What's okay. This is done like every five years. I was just interested, Fred, did we get some funding for that big storm we had? Maybe Anthony Fayo is a better guy to ask that question to. Did FEMA get some money to us, Anthony? Nothing I've received, no. Nothing I filed for. No. Huh. Rudy. No? All right. no. Typically, FEMA will only release funds after presidentially de declared disasters. I don't, I don't believe that most recent storm, if that's what you're referencing, was okay. Uh, was a was a presidential uh, declaration. Okay. Um, I could be mistaken on that, but I don't no, believe that's okay. so. Just popped into my mind. Okay. Next item on agenda is a public comment period on agenda uh, agenda items. The speaker can ask, make some comments on this, and it's not a question and answer. It's just making some comments. So we'll stand by on this for a couple of minutes, see if we get anybody who wants to make some comments on the uh, agenda items tonight. Yeah. <clears throat> Anybody? No. John McDonald. Nobody. Nobody. Off we go. Uh, Fred, I appreciate you being with us tonight. If you'd like to sign off, it's fine with me. If you want to hang around, that's fine with me too. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for the presentation. Very well done. Chairman, Lieutenant Motion Town Board Town of Winds approved the minutes of the Town Board meeting held on February 3rd, 2021, as per copies posted on the Town Clerk's Bulletin Board and Town Hall and same distribution of Town Board members. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Moreau? 
Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Chair Lantana, <laughs> Motor Town Board, Town of Windsor, hereby authorize the supervisor <coughs> to execute a road use and crossing agreement between the Town of Windsor and New York Transco LLC in connection with the Rock Tavern to Sugarloaf project to ensure New York State Transco LLC's indemnification of the Town of Windsor regarding same motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Mudetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Uh, this is a very small portion of this is in the town of New Windsor, and uh, Highway Superintendent Fayo has been in touch with Transco. I've had a couple of meetings with him, and I don't think it's going to have much of an effect on in New Windsor. Is that right, Anthony? Yes, very low effect. Yeah, okay. I think they're just covering all the bases. I was a receiving file. Here, no objection to Town Board Town of Windsor. So I receive and file the attached change order number two with Sullivan County Paving and Construction, which balances the contract, including elimination of the unit items not utilized during the construction of the county for the additional embankment work for a total reduction. That's a nice word. In the contract of $54,903.11. For the project commonly known as a replacement of Lake Roach Bridge over Metro North Railroad. Chair Lantana Motion Town Board Town of Windsor authorized a final payment in the sum of $30,072.24 to Sullivan County Paving Inc. for the replacement of Lake Road Bridge over Metro North Railroad Port Jervis Line project pursuant to recommendations of CPL Architecture Engineering Planning dated February 22nd. 2021 and McGoey has a rest of consulting engineers dated March 1st, 2021. Attached to your two. Motion. Moved. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. So I, I'm sure that the residents out that way are very happy this project is finished. It's, Seem to have taken a life of its own. And now the road is open and all is well. It's another receiving file. Here, no objection. Town Board, Town of Windsor, receiving file. The attached deed for the sale of Verplank Avenue from Town of Windsor to Global Companies LLC, dated January 6, 2021. Effective as of January 7, 2021. I'm recording Orange County Clerk's Office on the 28th day of January 2021 in Libra 1488 9 at page 1933. This is that small. Section we sold to Global for $65,000. And I just want to thank Dave Zagon for his work in that, dealing with Global and their attorneys. Another receiving file, him no objection, Town Board, Town of Windsor receiving file, the attached stipulation and tolling agreement between New York City Water Board, Town of the Windsor, Consolidated Water District, and the Town of the Windsor dated February 22nd, 2021, tolling the statute of limitations for six month period on claims filed against the Town of the Windsor. Consolidated water to the town of Windsor by the New York City Water Board for unpaid water charges. So, as you know, this uh, we have been notified by the city of Newark that they're planning to litigate the money that the town owes them for the water. We are trying to litigate with people who caused the problems with the water. So, we have now have signed this thing for six months that they will not sue us. And at the end of six months, I think we're in a position where we probably have to pay up. But we have also been in constant contact with uh, with uh, DEC about kind of re, re, re getting us the money back as they did for the city of Newburgh. So I'd just like to be treated the same way the city of Newburgh is being treated. You want to add anything to that, town attorney? No, sir. <laughs> All right. Chalente motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, adopt an order calling for public hearings for each of the sewer districts, number one through 24, to consider the increase in improvement of facilities related to the proposed sewer plan expansion, outflow relocation, and treatment upgrades of the Caesars Lane wastewater treatment plant. Said public hearing shall be held at April 7, 2021, at 555 Union Avenue, Windsor, New York, at 7 p.m. Said hearings will be held in accordance with the order attached hereto, and in accordance with the executive orders issued by the governor of the state of New York, and public hearings will be held by video conference and teleconference with instructions on how to access and participate provided in the public notice for same and on the town's website prior to the date of such hearings. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. 
Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. This will be where we will have separate public hearings for each of the 24 sewer districts in April, and then we'll uh, discuss the expansion or make a decision on the expansion at that point. All right, shall I attend motion town point in Windsor? Hereby authorize the supervisor to execute consent for the certificate of allocation between Moodna Creek Development LL LTD and DEP Stonegate LLC for 10,695 gallons per day of majestic sanitary sewer capacity for 81 unit project commonly known as Stonegate of the Windsor. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Medetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes, this is that project up in Countryside that we've been dealing with. This is just a sewer location between um, Moodna Creek and, uh, and the developer. General Lieutenant Mosher, Town Board, Town of Windsor, pursuant to the attached resolution requirements of legislation signed by the New York State Governor on September 7, 2020, Hereby adopt the public employer health emergency plan for the town of New Windsor. Authorize the town supervisor to sign the proclamation. Such plan, publish said plan in conspicuous location locations and include in it any employee handbooks in order that all employees may access them whenever they wish or need and direct the town clerk to post the plan to the town website in accordance with the resolution annex here to motion. Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum. Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Medetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes, we had this plan in place. We just had to incorporate some health issues into it, and we had some input from the unions, and uh, we'll in good shape on this one. Shall they tell motion town board town of Windsor shall within available resources assist all persons who feel they have been discriminated against to seek equity under the federal and state laws by filing a complaint with the New York State Division of Human Rights and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development as appropriate in accordance with the resolution attached here to motion. Move. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum. Yes. Councilman Moreau. Yes. Councilman Medetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes, this requirement by the government, but we handle lots of these things through my office when people call up and have some issues with their landlord, and uh, we make it our business to make sure that it's addressed fairly for everyone involved. Channel 9, Tenny Motion, Town of the Windsor, hereby call for public hearing to be held April 7, 2021, at 555 Union Avenue, the Windsor, New York, at 7 p.m. to invite the public to comment on project proposals which are to be submitted to the Orange County Community Development Program for fiscal year 2022. Motion? Move. Second. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yes. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes, I think the board members and maybe Anthony Fayo, Highway Superintendent, maybe should Kind of see if they can come up with any of this that we need for that we can, we can file for community bill and block grant money and maybe go through Mike Weeks. I've got him as a point person on this. Okay. Chair Lentani Motion, Town Board, Town of Windsor, authorized a solicitor's permit to Brian Collis doing business as Mr. Dingaling Ice Cream Incorporated to allow the operation of a mobile food service establishment selling good humor ice cream by Mr. Collis and or his employee. Michael Glocko, oh boy, De La Pedra, permit shall be obtained from the town clerk's office. Motion? Move. Second. Okay. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? No. Councilman Bedetti? No. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? So we got two yeses and two noes. Is that what we have? Should I abstain? Huh. All right, listen, my objection to this was always that 
it would take business away from our local businesses and they are struggling. And I thought that this $2,000 fee that they had to pay probably would be okay. But I kind of rethought this and I'm gonna go along with the naysayers. No. Andrew, sorry. <laughs> All right. Him no objection, Town Boy Town of the Windsor received and filed the attached summons and complaint in the matter of Zygmunt Brock and Stuart Hill LLC versus the Town of the Windsor et al. Everybody has received a copy of this. I have received a copy of it. I've discussed it with the town attorney, and uh, we're not too sure where it's going, but we have now received and filed the summons. This is that property out on Tolman, Lo uh, Tolman Road that I know everybody's familiar with. So this thing also seems to take a life of its own. Here no objection, Town Board Town of Windsor receive and file with the town clerk the attached GASB 75 actuarial, actuarial valuation for the year ending December 31st, 2020, as prepared by the Summit Actual, Actuarial Services, LSC. And this is, has to do with the post-retirement benefits, uh, health benefits for town employees. Another receive and file. Him no objection, Town Board Town and Windsor receive and file performance bond number 6540001 from QBE Insurance Corporation, the amount of $494,756 for the construction of a sewer pump station as required pursuant to the first amended developer's agreement dated December 3rd, 2014, affecting the Meadowbrook Major Subdivision. So this thing is still kicking around too. We'll talk about this. I think it, we took. Uh, Monday, uh, Monday night, we'll get back to this in April. Um, receive and file the 2021 monthly reports. Here, no objection, Town Board Town of Windsor should receive and file the town clerk to attach monthly reports for the following departments for December 2021. Okay, they're all, they're all dated for the month of January 2021. Justice Calderon, Justice Myers, Police Department, Building Department, Recreation Department, Tax Receiver, Utility Report, Tax Receiver, Monthly Tax Statement, Town Clerk, the Windsor Emergency Medical Services. So I also noticed in here and looked through this today, we're still, the Police Department is still making DW drive on intoxicated arrests. And I appreciate their efforts in that, that we need to get these people off the road. Okay, so that wraps up that portion of where we are. And we're now at the public forum. So before I open up the public, any board members want to say anything? Welcome back to you after the public. It's okay if you want to wait. Five George, just after um, the next Wednesday, the town board, another town board meeting, right? A special one? Yeah, we have that special meeting on the comprehensive master plan, which will be uh, seven o'clock. It'll be a special meeting. Uh, we'll go over the plan. I've asked uh, Dave Zagon, who's been involved in it pretty deeply, to make a presentation. We had a couple of councilmen who were on the committee, Stephen Bedetti and Stephen Moreau, and I would suspect that they may have some input into this. I have reviewed it extensively, and I probably will have some comments. And one of the key players happens to be at the planning board that night for a, a short meeting, Jennifer Gallagher. And there's only three people on that planning board agenda, so I'm hoping that she joins us too because she was a force in this uh, project too. And she probably is the one who deals with most of this stuff. And I, I don't get it till after she's kind of ready to need some help. So hopefully she'll be with us. So yeah, that's a good point. So that'll be. Next Wednesday at seven o'clock, we've covered all the bases. And uh, all right, let's see if there's any comments from the public, but we'll wait a minute. Let's see Fred Donite bailed out, huh? Smart. Anthony, you look rather nice tonight. Thank you. So do you, the rest no. of you. I bet I know who dressed you. You're right. I know. All you're right. right. Yes. I look as good. Huh? <laughs> I dressed myself. That's why I look like this. All right. I know we got an email today from a resident. I'll read this one. we make sure that there's no one else wants to comment. No. 
Not any boy. Nothing. Nobody. Nobody. Trina. This there. All right. This email came in today. Uh, this is from. Uh, uh, I'll just read it. My name is David Dubinsky. I live in the town of New Windsor. I'm requesting that the town board take up the matter of free health care for town board members who serve two terms. This has been evaluated. I'm asking the town to eliminate this benefit, at least have a vote on this proposal. This can be a multi-million dollar cost to New Windsor taxpayers. If, if this does not get removed, then the taxpayers must be notified that if we elect a board member to a second term, it will cost us about a million dollars for a re-elected board member, David Dubinsky. I'll just make a quick comment that we talked about this at the workshop Monday night, and we agreed to talk about bring this back up on the, in the April workshop to discuss this particular issue. So anybody want to comment on this? I? OK. So that's it, nobody? OK, so let's do this. Jill Lent, Danny Motion, Town Board Town of Winds, adjourn the Town Board meeting at 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 7.36 p.m. Motion? Motion? Move. Move. Got adjourning, please. All right, roll call. Second. 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 There you go. Okay. Roll call. Councilman Regenbaum? Yes. Councilman Moreau? Yep. Councilman Bedetti? Yes. Councilwoman Santiago? Yes. Supervisor Myers? Yes. Okay. Let's. We'll cut the live feed. The town board hang around a minute. I just want to give you an update on something. <clears throat> Is it?